2003, we did approach the, the, uh, the MEK. We did ask them to lay down their arms. We did ask them to consolidate uh, in one camp called Camp Ashraf. And we did guarantee uh, in writing to each citizen, each member of the MEK, that they would receive the protection of the United States. The fact that um, we turned over uh, uh, the status of forces agreement was not ag agreed to with the uh, uh, Iraqi government and we withdrew our forces in no way, in my view, abdicates our responsibility uh, for that protection. There have been seven attacks um, going back to 2009 on these people. Four have been at Camp Liberty. Three have been at Camp Ashraf. 116 people have been killed, and 1,200 or so have been wounded. The world it has global significance. Proliferation is one of the key issues of our time. And on the other hand, we have this moral imperative to do what's right by people we made uh, our commitment to, and there were only 20, 2,900 left. Um, my, my personal view is that Iran really doesn't want them to leave Iraq because having them all in one place makes it very uh, easy to, to target. And if um, Iraq, Iraq is complicit in turning, either participating in or turning the other cheek when these things happen, then you just have a stage set for the systematic annihilation of 2,900 people, and that is morally offensive and not what we stand for and not what we want to see happen. Now, there's loose talk in the State Department of Ever and other places that, well, our obligation ran out in 2009 when we turned everything over to Iraq. That is the kind of talk that we cannot have. That is the path to cynicism, the cynicism in American foreign policy, not the nobility which we seek. You do not sell out 3,000 unarmed people because they become inconvenient, because you hope to pacify a group of people who do not have a history of keeping their word and who are, as we sit at the table, killing Americans by supplying IEDs to the Afghan Taliban. Those people must not be sell out. I do not oppose an agreement with Iran. I oppose agreement that costs 3,000 innocent lives of people who have been pro-American. That's what I oppose. There, was, there have been four or five attacks on this group of people. First, while they were living in Ashraf, and second, at our behest, when they moved to Camp Liberty, which subsequently became more or less a prison camp. The last time... They were attacked by either Iraqi forces. A number were executed. And not only were a number executed, they were executed with their hands tied behind their back, and some of them were executed on hospital gurneys after they'd been wounded. And on the person of those people who were executed in cold blood were the little cards signed by the American personnel, military personnel, that guaranteed that the United States government would stand behind the preservation of those people's lives. We are not keeping our word. I cannot imagine a situation where we would negotiate. We would keep our word to those who have murdered Americans, but we would sell out the people who are innocent victims. And we need to stand up to the mullahs. And if the mullahs today are going to break off these negotiations because we took 3,000 refugees into this country, then these are not the people we ought to be negotiating, because if they'll kill the negotiations over that, they're most likely going to kill the negotiations as soon as they get out from under the economic problems the sanctions are causing them and get what they want. This is not the time to exercise cynicism in American policy. This is the time to exercise nobility. 3,000 people. Over 100 have already been murdered in cold blood. We disarmed them. We promised to keep them safe. We have yet to keep our word. What I'm asking the Congress to do, and what I'm asking the administration to do, is do what you said you were going to do. Since the election of the widely acclaimed moderate President Rouhani, the number of executions in Iran have reportedly skyrocketed. Since June, over 400 have occurred, including more than 20 political prisoners put to death. 
In the past two weeks alone, over 40 executions have taken place. But this is only a symptom of a desperate leadership. Attacks on the opposition outside Iran have also dramatically increased, with the brutal, as noted in some cases, execution-style murders of 52 members of the MEK at Camp Ashraf in, in September, and four missile attacks since then on MEK members in Camp Liberty, with 14 dead and hundreds wounded. Clearly, the MEK is seen by the regime as a threat to its existence. So, what is the way forward? First and foremost, by living up to our commitments to protect the MEK while in Iraq and making every effort to resettle them as quickly as possible to remove them from the certain future attacks and murders condoned by, if not orchestrated, by the Maliki regime. We must stand up for human rights. It is the right thing to do, and it's the right policy to follow. This is where our moral imperative and our practical interests intersect. The reason why I'm here today is to talk to you about the importance of the United States living up to its latest obligation, which it has not fulfilled yet, to the 3,000 people at Camp, Refu at Camp Liberty who were refugees from Iran. Under his unwatchful watch, there have been a persecution of these people, there has been attacks on them, They've been denied, denied the safety and security. All the while, the United Nations is supposed to be responsible for their safety, health, and welfare. The reason why this is important to me is because it's not merely just another refugee crisis. It is because the United States gave its solemn written commitment that it would provide safety and security and a safe haven to these people. I can tell you I spoke this morning with... Secretary Kerry's special representative on resettlement of the Camp Liberty uh, refugees. And he said to me something, which he, his name is Jonathan Weiner and a good friend of mine, and he said to me the following, and, I, and it perplexes me as it should perplex you. These people are sitting ducks. They've been attacked already. Over 100 have been killed. They don't have the security that, they, that the United States guaranteed. There is no doubt that they're sitting in the Fox House under Mr. Maliki's forces who are determined to do the bidding of the mullahs against them. Why else are, would they be attacked? Why, haven't they, why hasn't the United Nations provided the security that they need? My gosh, they don't even have, they don't even have trailers that are reinforced. Now, I have no illusions about Prime Minister Maliki's unrepentant, unreconstructed adherence as a Shiite radical supporter of the mullahs, that he's going to be the puppet that is going to single-handedly, by attrition, destroy the lives of these people if we let him continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.